Battle for the Grid has a pretty complicated combo system, so I'm making this guide to help. The intention is that after watching this video, you'll be able to break down any combo video you see into its elements to understand what's going on, and turn your stray hits mid-game into full freestyle combos, making the most out of any situation. I'm recording this on version 1.6.2. Though I assume the bulk of the system will remain the same, details may have changed by the time you watch this video. Battle for the Grid contains multiple combo systems working mostly independent of each other. But luckily they're not too difficult to break down, and they sort of work into three phases of Grounded, Juggle Limit, and Post-Juggle Limit. The first combo system is called Hitstun Deterioration. Often abbreviated HSD, it only affects grounded combos. Hitstun Deterioration is a hidden value increasing slowly with combo time, causing your grounded hits to deal less hitstun. It's conveniently shown by the bar in training mode. This system makes sure Granted Links don't become infinite combos, but it definitely affects some characters a lot more than others. Some characters are able to reset a juggled opponent and continue on the ground late into a combo. The second system, Juggle Limit, affects only airborne opponents. This system is represented clearly in training mode by a yellow bar. It will increase both with combo time and on each hit by an amount determined on a per move basis. Once Juggle Limit is maxed out, hitting your opponent will cause them to flip out of your combo in an invincible state. That is unless you use one of the many accepted moves we were about to go into. This is where Battle for the Grid combos can become quite complicated, as the final system is more like a lot of smaller systems and exceptions that run parallel to both Hitstun Deterioration and Juggle Limit. These even allow you to continue a combo past the point where the prior two systems seemingly shouldn't allow you. These can pretty much be put into a checklist of different combo states that each have their own limit. Before we get into that checklist though, there's some important exceptions we need to cover. First, a standing light used at any point in a juggle will cause the opponent to immediately invincible flip out of your combo. This can be pretty good for some reset situations, but that's for another video. Another exception is that multi-hit moves will only cause an invincible flip out on the very last hit. This allows you to cancel out a moves early to avoid juggle limit. Universally, special attacks will avoid juggle limit. This includes S-button attacks, EX moves, supers, and snapbacks. Finally, any move that causes a special combo state we're about to cover will also be accepted by Juggle Limit. The first special combo state is Off the Ground, usually abbreviated OTG. This state allows you to pick up a knockdown opponent and continue a combo. The first time you use an OTG, the opponent will bounce high off the ground, which is very easy to continue from. Subsequent OTGs, however, will cause a much smaller bounce. This is not a hard combo limit, as there are ways to continue a combo from this for some characters, or by using some assists. You are allowed no more than 3 crouching lights on an airborne opponent, with the 4th causing an invincible flip out, ending your combo. Remember you are allowed any amount of grounded crouching lights without affecting this limit, subject to hit stun deterioration. Very important to note that whilst this is a limit, it is not a special combo state, and a crouching light after juggle decay on an airborne opponent will cause an invincible flip out even if it is the first used. Spinning knockdown is allowed to be used twice on an airborne opponent, in addition to any amount of times you can land it on a grounded opponent. On the third juggle spinning knockdown, the opponent will invincible flip out, making it a hard limit. Ground bounce is interesting, as it is tracked separately grounded and in juggles. You are permitted one of each, resulting in different situations when repeated. A second juggled ground bounce will knock the opponent down but not allow you to OTG, making it a hard limit. Grounded ground bounces, however, will instead cause a knockdown similar to spin that you are allowed to combo off of. You are allowed two normal launches, with the third still launching but putting the opponent in an invincible state, giving you a lot of frame advantage. Capture states can be performed twice, with the third also causing an invincible flip out. Trey's assist counts towards this limit. You are only allowed one wall bounce, with any further attempts knocking the opponent down. However, you can OTG from these as many times as you like. Reverse launch is a semi-rare combo state that you are allowed only one of. Repeating it will cause the opponent to become invincible but still be launched, similar to a normal launcher, giving high frame advantage. Freeze is a state caused by Udonna and you only ever get one including the use of her assist. The opponent, when hit twice, will still go through the frozen time whilst invulnerable before flipping out, so there are interesting setup opportunities here. Crumple is a rare single-use combo state that actually gives you different results if you get the opponent out of it early or late. Hitting them early will result in the opponent still being standing. However, hit them late and they will actually be juggled out of it. Repeating a crumple will simply knock the opponent down, allowing an OTG. 
Stagger State is a common staple in many characters' combos. It will re-stand an airborne opponent, giving you ages to follow up. If you leave them alone, they will recover in a standing state. Repeat a stagger, and you get a knockdown with an easy OTG. There are some exceptions to these rules. Some moves look like they cause a state, but are actually unlimited. You'll have to approach these on a move-by-move -move basis. Most assists and all Zors will be ignored by all combo rules, making them safe to use at any point in a combo. Now that we have all of our rules in a neat checklist, let's think about how they interact and look at an example full combo. Here stun deterioration is the lightest at the beginning of a combo, so if you have good ground links, it may be a good idea to start your combo with these to preserve special states for later. It also makes for great hit confirms. Once your opponent is juggled, you probably still want to avoid using special combo states early on if your character or team is good at using them later to cheat the combo system. This can really help you build meter and squeeze a lot more out of a combo, especially true if you have a simple repeatable juggle loop. Sometimes the damage you can get, however, is really worth it early on with special combo states. If your character has good options after a restand, they can be very strong at the point in a combo where juggle limit is maxed to gain a little bit more meter before you spend the rest of your special combo states you have access to. Some characters won't be the best at using up all of their combo states when the juggle limit is maxed, so if you have assists available, don't be afraid to use them here to bridge combo sections or just tag out into another character. With all that meter built, ending a combo with an EX, a super, or an EX into super is often the last damage you need to finish off a character. Some characters are even capable of comboing after their super, giving you even more options.